Hi folks, and welcome back to another segment of Terminating Low Voltage Cables. Again, I'm Ron with Ideal, and again, welcome to the shop. Hey, uh, in this segment, we're going to talk a little bit about testing of cables, and primarily talking about UTP cable testers, or category cable testers, although many of these will do coax and foam wire, and even some will even do fiber optic as well. But uh, I wanted to give you an idea, or kind of an introduction to... Uh, testing in this industry and uh, what's out there and, and what to look out for and um, and uh, what you might need or don't need. And uh, when I look at testing in the industry today, we start out with what we call wire map testers, okay? And wire mappers um, are very simple, basically, you know, they're uh, fairly inexpensive. You're going to spend somewhere under $100 for a basic wire mapper, 80 to 100 bucks. Uh, and uh, they will do really in most cases all you need uh, and there it's a tester I can really hand to anybody and I can afford to hand anybody one of these things and it's going to look for the opens and shorts and miss wires and if you do a good job uh, to pulling your wire good job terminating your cable and it passes one of these well you know I'm going to say it probably would pass a, a you know a higher end certification type tester okay so they're wire mappers and that's you know everybody can afford one of these things well if the customer is wanting something above that then we run into qualification testers now qualification testers is a, a piece of test equipment that a I can spit a report off of which is nice I can actually hand somebody something that they can pay me with um, and I can store thousands of results on these things and they will obviously do everything that the lower end testers do but they do a few other things they will measure you know uh, uh, length and, and although some wire mappers will too but uh, um, you know uh, in, in many cases what these are going to do they're going to simulate something and you know when I look at data networking and if a guy's looking at me to you know do a test on his cabling system for data he more than likely is running Ethernet okay which is a protocol in data so these and more likely are going to be Ethernet testers they're going to simulate thousand base T or hundred base T and they're going to check the bit errors, and if the thing's looking right, <laughs> uh, it should, uh, you know, pass, you know, whatever, uh, you know, we're doing, again, gigabit or whatever it might be. And um, so they, met, they specifically do that, or voice over IP or something like that. So they're going to simulate something. But again, at the end of the day, I can store thousands of results on these things and, and, uh, and, uh, and print something out to somebody. Now, uh, these are going to run you, depending on what you're purchasing, you know, co copper only version, you know, thousand to fifteen hundred dollars and thereabouts uh, today. Uh, and in the higher end that do fiber as well, copper and fiber, you might be spending closer to three thousand dollars in a tester. Okay. Now, if you are doing a, a large commercial job and uh, the, the large uh, builder is asking for certification. What they're doing is they're asking you to test the cable to a certain standard, CAT6, CAT5E, you know, 6A, whatever it might be. And these testers that do this do a lot of high frequency testing as well, and they get a little pricey. And you can spend, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars real quick in one of these things and beyond, especially if they do fiber as well. So uh, certification testing is usually on the higher end jobs that you find find out there. In some cases, it's going to be total overkill, like in a residential home, probably. But uh, uh, so those are the kind of testers that you might be looking for when you go out and buy buy these testers. So again, wire mappers uh, usually in the you know hunt you know under hundred dollar range, fifty to hundred bucks, uh, and can go upwards of you know. Free to even four hundred dollars, depending on what you get with it. And uh, qualification testers, uh, they would run you in the thousand to three thousand dollar range, and uh, then certification testers probably again eight to ten and above. Okay. Now, when we look at what we're doing on basic testing and wire map testers, as I said, are one of those testers that really in most cases is what most of us need to do. Wire mappers check for the basics, and they check for opens and cable. And cable. All right. And uh, you would, there's a lot of reasons why there might be an open in the wire, and a lot of it's usually some sort of installer doing something stupid. But uh, uh, you, you know, for misusing a punch down tool, the cutting a wire, who knows? But uh, there might be an open in the wire. We might also obviously have shorts, and 
Uh, you wouldn't think this would happen, but I've seen it all happen. And this is where we're putting maybe two wires in one spot uh, and not even realizing because the lights, you know, dim or whatever it might be. So open shorts, we're looking for reversals in wire. Uh, this is where, you know, I've got the pair reversed on one end accidentally. So I've got the white, blue, and the blue down on this end. On the opposite side is blue, white, blue. So, um, you know, um, very simple to do sometimes. Again, if you're not paying attention as you're doing uh, your wiring, okay? Uh, reversals, we're looking for miswires. Uh, miswires where uh, uh, maybe I've got a pair reversed, where I've got the orange and green reversed. And you know, and as we do 560A versus 560B wiring schemes, obviously those pairs get flipped and that, uh, that never happens. <laughs> Uh, and it happens quite a bit. Or sometimes, you know, sometimes that wire, like plenum wire, that uh, jacketing doesn't hold ink very well. Gosh darn it, you know, that blue looks a lot like green and that orange looks a lot like brown. And, and so sometimes those happen. Um, and, and they do. And then on, on the last one, the last one is something called a split pair. Now, a split pair. Now, um, be leery of sort of uh, uh, basic low-end of wire map testers uh, if they're thirty dollars or something less or a little over or whatever in that range uh, you'll find none of them do what we call split pair testing okay and um, so uh, be leery of that though because those are the five things we have to test now if you're wondering what a split pair is is say I take uh, on one end I wire it so the white green and the blue are hooked up uh, where green was supposed to be. So the blue and the green are reversed. I got them in the wrong spots or miswired, I should say. Uh, and on the other end, I did the same thing. So a normal tester would look from end to end and say, is, you know, pin four hooked to pin four? And it would say, yeah, but it's, we're using the blue wire, not the green wire. And when we send a signal down a pair, we've got to have that, that pair twisted together to reduce, to reduce this noise or crosstalk. So, uh, so if that happens, if we're sending half the signal down one conductor and half the signal down another conductor, but the two are not twisted together, that's called a split pair. Okay? And uh, you'll find testers out there that don't measure this. So, uh, so that's what you're looking for in a basic um, wire map testers. Now, uh, if they are uh, up in price, they might also do length as well. And if they do length, um, more than likely they do it through capacitance. And what they'll do in order to measure length, the, the more inexpensive and really pretty accurate way of doing it is to measure the capacitance the tester sees. And so the tester will look at along the length of the wire and measure the capacitance in the wire. Now, we know all wire has a certain amount of capacitance capacitance per foot, okay? And you can get the spec right off the manufacturer of the wire or uh, you can get pretty close. You can take a known length of cable and you know set the tester to exactly set it to this because you can change this capacitance per foot on it uh, if you care to. And um, and uh, those are fairly inexpensive. And usually somewhere, you know, for a couple three hundred dollars you got a tester that does length to and they normally will have multiple remotes because one of the downsides of some of these uh, inexpensive models would be that they, they only have one remote. So you got to take the remote, plug it into an outlet someplace in the house someplace, run downstairs with the tester down into your panel, plug it in and hopefully find the right one and make the test. And once you find it, then you run back upstairs, take that remote and move it to another outlet and run back downstairs and obviously find the next one. So if you buy these more uh, uh, versions that have you know, a little bit more money, they would usually have multiple remotes, and they would say, ah, you know, that cable's good, and you know, I just saw you know ID number five, and you know, if that's the one we put in the kitchen, well, obviously uh, that wire fit fed the kitchen, so uh, they might do length as well. Uh, uh, true uh, time domain reflectometers, uh, which was another way of doing this, are a lot more money, and uh, you know, uh, you may not need that level, so. Uh, and those are what the basics do. And uh, then the next level up from testers in that range would be these uh, uh, qualification type testers that uh, we talked about a little bit ago. And when you look at these, uh, they, we can store thousands, uh, thousands of results on them. Uh, we can uh, uh, spit a report out at the end of the day. Some do copper, some do copper and fiber. Uh, we can simulate, you know, voice over IP. Uh, there, we can do everything that obviously a wire wrapper can do. We can do the length of the cabling. It'll give you what we call the skew in the cabling as well. Uh, one of the things that we do with um, 
uh, Ethernet in order to see if any Ethernet system is working is to measure the bit error rates and the skew in the cabling. And the skew primarily is the difference in the four pairs. You know, all pairs are twisted slightly different. So as the signals travels down to cables, they all hit the far end at slightly different times. And we need to control this, and that's one thing this tester does measure, and if it's within spec, it will, would say so. And um, it would also measure, not necessarily bit errors, and, uh, but because when we know if an Ethernet system says, if it supports 10, uh, a 1 gigabit network speeds, this system must be able to support no more than one bit error every 10 gigabits. Okay, so one bit error every 10 gig to support one gig of speed. And we know that if we lose a bit, uh, we lose a packet in an Ethernet packet. So we actually are measuring packets here, but again, if we lose a packet, uh, we know we, we, it will not support gigabit. Maybe it will only support fast Ethernet or 100 base T. But those are the kinds of things we can do with these testers. And they do a lot of other things too. I mean, we can blink hubs. Uh, we can uh, you know, look at IP addresses, and there's a lot of other things that we can do. And if even some of these, we can even look at the active networks around us and find out who's using the most bandwidth and things like that. So we can spend a lot of money, in, you know, thousand to three thousand dollars, and maybe something like this. But it may not be a certification tester, but you know, in a lot of cases, uh, that might be all you might need. And uh, as far as certification testers. I'm going to leave that to another uh, video uh, as to what we actually measure within certification testing, and it's, it's actually quite a bit. So, uh, again, hey, thanks for coming to another segment of uh, Terminating Low Voltage Cables. Hope that helped you out a little bit about as far as what's available out there. And, again, I'm Ron with Ideal Industries, and we'll plan on seeing you next.